Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. my sister my name is Zelda pleasure to meet you all right all right what's your name Tanisha very good very good so what we are here doing Tanisha the people that you see on this sign right here make up the 12 tribes of Israel on this side we have Judah Benjamin Levi so on and so forth this is what God calls us on this side is probably where you're able to identify on which is American blacks West Indians Haitians Puerto Ricans so on and so forth so if I may ask, where, do you see yourself on this side? Judah and Benjamin. Judah and Benjamin, where would your father be from? Benjamin. Benjamin, okay. So you would be from a so-called West Indian or Jamaican. Your, so, your father's Jamaican? Okay, so God calls you Benjamin, which was the youngest son of Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, which is the 12 tribes that you see right here. And we descend through those tribes, through those descendants. And we're going to go through a couple of curses to prove to you how we know that the so-called Jamaicans today are the Israelites according to the Bible, okay? So let me get Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Bring it out. All right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. No. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So Moses is speaking to the children of Israel, the people you see on this sign, telling that if they didn't listen to the voice of God, which is the Bible, that curses would come, would come upon us. Now, a curse is something good or something bad? Well, in this context, is dealing with something bad. Right. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with you. I'll meet you at your level. The good thing about the curse is that we're able to identify who we are. Right. That's the only good thing about the curse, because without these curses, verse 46, I'm going to show you the importance of these curses. Watch this. Verse 46, and they shall be upon thee for a sign. So these curses shall be upon the children of Israel for a sign. Now, what you see in these images right here is an example of a sign. So through these curses and examples, that we have these photos we're able to identify that only the so-called blacks and latinos went through these curses would you agree yeah. would you say a chinese man went through any of this no. would you what about a white man no. we see the white man committing these crimes right? right so this is how we know that through these curses this is the the good thing about the curses that we're able to identify who we are but the bad thing is the atrocities that we see in these signs right. so through these signs it helps us identify something I'm sorry. So that's how I know, like, I see a stop sign. Now, if I was in a car, I got to start pressing my brakes because the stop sign helps me identify and I got to start slowing down my vehicle, okay? How did the so-called Jamaicans get to America? Boat. By boat, very good. What, what type of boat? A slave boat. That's actually biblical, my sister. Let me prove that to you real quick. Watch this. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So Egypt is a condition. It's not talking about the landmass of Egypt. Because remember, when Moses took the Israelites out of Egypt, we never went back as a nation. Now, you and I, we could get a plane ticket and go to Egypt. But us as a nation, we never went back to Egypt. So Egypt is a condition, which means slavery. So he's going to bring us back again. Again, with slavery on what? With ships. That's what you just said, with ships. So now we know we're able to identify this sign right here. When you look at the bottom of this sign, you see all of us packed up with sardines. You know what I'm saying? Stacked up on top of each other. And what you see here, these green lines, is the slave routes that were taken. So it started with 1492, 
because you had the um, the conquistadors, they came to this side of the world and took the so-called Hispanics to Spain on slave ships, and then you have the so-called blacks going on this side of the world, being transported from, from Af the west coast of Africa to the Americas. So that's how we know, just based on that curse real quick, I'm not gonna take up too much of your time, but based on that curse, the Bible said that God is speaking to the Israelites. So based on that one curse and these signs, who would you say the Israelites are today? Us, the blacks and Latinos, right? right. So you wouldn't call yourself a Jamaican, right? Right, because God calls you Benjamin, based on where your father's from. Let me get Numbers 118 real quick, and then we're going to get 1 John 5 and 3. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to prove to you that we are what our father is, because our father plants the seed. You know what I'm saying? Our mother, the, uh, the womb of our mother just um, helps n nurture and give the seed nutrition for those 9, 10 months. Okay? So watch this real quick. The book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So that's what's determined our nationality, okay? Now I want to ask you, do you love God? Yes. I'm sure you do, you know, but today in the Christian church, that we have not been properly taught how to love God, you know what I'm saying? Because I can't give God a hug and a kiss, I can't give Jesus Christ a hug and a kiss, so there gotta be a different way to show God in Christ that I love him, and this is what the Bible says on how we should love him. The book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So that's how we show God that we love him, we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous, meaning they're not hard to do. Now, I want to show you a commandment that you're keeping right now, okay? Deuteronomy 22 and 5, and then we're going to get uh, modest apparel, okay? So I want to show you a commandment that you're keeping right now. When many of our sisters, this is what, what you're wearing right now is what you should wear on a daily basis. And I'm going to prove it to you. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Now if I was up here with a dress and high heels, would you take me seriously? You would take, if I had a dress with high heels? If that's who you were, yeah. Okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna get, we're, let's read it again from the beginning. <laughs> the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So, this is a law that you're actually keeping, okay? The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Now, the things that pertain, uh, uh, the things that pertain unto a man will be pants. You're not wearing pants right now, okay? So, the same thing, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. That's why I gave that example for how on a dress so us men are not supposed to be wearing dresses okay so but I want to give you on exactly how to wear that dress okay first Timothy 2 and 9 the book of first Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9 in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel so what do you think it means that women adorn themselves in modest apparel what's your definition of modest basically covered up Covered up. There Very you good. Go. There so you have on a dress, you're keeping the commandment of Deuteronomy 22 and 5, but your dress got to be a little bit longer. I shouldn't be able to see that much of your legs. You know what I'm saying? Now, are you married? No. You're not married. Okay, so if, if in the future you do find a husband, your body parts are for only your husband to see. You know what I'm saying? So... In the future, now that you know that you're so, a woman is supposed to be wearing a dress, now what you have to do is just get dresses that are a little bit longer. And make sure they're loose-fitting, you know what I'm saying? Because we know it's the summertime, we know we, we want to try to keep cool, it's been hot all day today, you know what I'm saying? So, but make sure that your dress is modest. Make, in other words, that, you know when women sit down, when a woman sits down, her dress has a tendency to rise up. So make sure when you sit down that your dress is still below your knees. That's how you know that it's a modest apparel. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You understand that so far? Yeah. So remember, these are just one of the commandments that we have to keep us as Israelite men and women. Because as a result of not keeping God's commandments is why these things happen to us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Remember you had said that um, you wouldn't judge me if I did have on a dress, right? Yeah. Okay, so now I want to ask you um does the bible give us permission to judge each other 
That is, the, there's a difference between judging and condemning. But just think about it. Let's say, let's say if you have a, let's say if you have a son or daughter, and they put their hand on the stove, you are gonna slap their hand, right. you know, correct them. Right. So what you kind of did was just judge your child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I want to show you that the Bible does say that we are allowed to judge, not condemn, but judge. Okay, okay? there's a difference, and I'm yeah. gonna explain the difference between the two. Okay. okay. The book of John, chapter seven and verse twenty-four. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So Christ himself said, judge not according to appearance. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you may have somebody who may appear like, like somebody in a three-piece suit. You know, we may think that he's a businessman, that he's educated, but meanwhile, he doesn't know how to treat his people. Or you may have somebody that's not dressed as fancy as a man in a three-piece suit. You know what I'm saying? But that man, he may know how to show charity. He may know how to love his brother as he loves himself. So now let me, so what we did when we, let's find out what righteousness is according to the Bible. Because Christ said judge righteous judgment. So the same thing that by you uh, wearing a, by you wearing a dress, that is a righteous judgment because you are making a righteous decision by making an attempt to keep the commandments of God. Okay, go ahead. The book of Luke chapter one and verse six, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. They were both righteous, walking in the commandments of God. So when we judge righteously, we judge according to the commandments of the Lord. Okay, let me get a Sirach. I think it's 4625. Okay, now I want to show you that we are allowed to judge. You know what I'm saying? And if I was wearing a dress, I would hope that you would judge me. I would hope that you would correct me like, bro, what's wrong with you? Well, I wouldn't condemn you. I wouldn't. Right, you wouldn't condemn me because why? Because if, if I was wearing a dress, I still have an opportunity to repent. You know how the, you know how the Bible says, uh, judge not, lest thou that also be judged? What Christ was doing, he was making an example of the Pharisees because what they would do, they would judge people in hypocrisy. They would condemn the other Israelites during that time in Rome. You know what I'm saying? But this is what Paul said through the Spirit of Christ. Watch this. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. So either man or woman, he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Do you know what it means to be spiritual? What would you say? Huh? To be one with God is, uh... To be one with God, okay. Yeah, understanding of the spirit. Okay, you're on the right point. You, you, you're, not, you're on the right point. You're good. Uh, let me get, yep, you got that. I'm going to show you what spiritual is according to the Bible. Okay. The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. So we know that the law is spiritual, okay? So that when a spiritual man judges all things, it's that man that's keeping the commandments to the best of his ability that judges all things, okay? okay so now, I want to ask you a question. Um. Black Lives Matter. Does uh, when you hear the word, when you hear the term Black Lives Matter, what does that mean to you? Um, a race of people who are fighting for themselves. Okay, okay. Now I want to ask you. Um, you see all the protests going on, right? Let me get Jeremiah eleven and seven. You see all the protests going on, right? Um, do you think to protest is a good thing or a bad thing? I personally think it's a good thing. Okay, okay. And what are the benefits that come out of protesting? Um, freedom of speech. Okay, okay, right. Pr pr uh, equal rights, right? right. Because during, um, during the time of Martin Luther King, what they did, they protested for civil rights so that way we can get the opportunity to do what we're doing right now, right. teach on the street, right. you know what I'm saying? Uh, out publicly. Because many people, this is considered treason to the U.S. government, you know what I'm saying? But I want to show you the righteous protests that we should be doing. Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 11 and verse 7 For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt. So the prophet Jeremiah is saying he earnestly protested to our fathers, the 12 tribes of Israel when he brought us out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Even unto this day, rising early and protesting, say, obey my voice. So he said, rising early and protesting, saying, obey my voice. Now, are uh, people protesting to keep the commandments of God today when they do the protests? To keep the commandments? Yeah, are they protesting that? I mean, it's not how they're being treated. Yeah, they're not treated. They're being condemned for things that, yeah, so insidious. 
got you, got you. Because when they protest, they have, you know, they have the signs, I can't breathe, right. Black Lives Matter. Right. But just imagine if they was protesting, imagine if you've seen 100 people protesting right now saying, keep the commandments, keep the commandments. Can you imagine that happening? Yeah. You could imagine that happening? Yeah. Have you ever seen that happen? Not a hundred people, but I've seen it happen. You've seen it happen? Okay. So I want to show you, what we're doing right now is that same type of protest. You know what I'm saying? Because God said, rise early and protest saying, obey the voice of God. That's all we're saying right now is to keep the commandments of God. So this is the protest that each and every black and Latino should be doing. You know what I'm saying? So. I know you have to go, all right? But check out that flyer, all right? There's a lot of information on there that you can teach your people, okay? I'm sure you probably have, you know, I don't know if you have nieces or nephews, okay? So you can show this to your nieces. You can show them that, hey, we gotta start wearing a dress. We gotta wear a dress that goes down to our knees. Now I wanna ask you, do you wear pants? You do wear pants, okay. So now after today, remember, cause we can't force you to do anything. You know, let me get James 4 and 17. Because right now the ball's in your court. You know what I'm saying? Remember, we're not here to condemn, you know? Because I have a wife. She used to wear pants. Little by little, once she read that law, once once it was taught to her, my wife started buying a dress. And uh, we have a lot of sisters that turn their jeans into, into jean skirts. It's possible. You know what I'm saying? But we have to make that attempt. But watch what the Bible says when we know better, okay? The book of James, chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and do it it not to him it is sin so we know that sin is the breaking of God's commandments so it says the man or woman that knows to do good and does it not to him it is sin so now we already know that God is gonna have mercy on whom he will have mercy but now that you know this the judgment of God can be slightly adjusted because now you know better versus somebody who doesn't know better you know so just keep that you know on your hip keep that on the back burner you know what I'm saying moving forward we used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how we're men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.